It's the Earth's cultivated cropland that keeps humanity alive and thriving. Plants provide food, fiber, housing, and a host of other benefits, and fertilizer plays a key role in this process. All growing plants need 17 essential elements to grow to their full genetic potential. Of these 17, 14 absorb by plants through the soil, while the remaining three come from air and water. That's where fertilizer comes in. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, or NPK, are the big three primary nutrients and commercial fertilizers. Each of these fundamental nutrients play a key role in plant nutrition. Nitrogen is considered to be the most important nutrient, and plants absorb more nitrogen than any other element. Nitrogen is essential in making sure plants are healthy as they develop and nutritious to eat after they're harvested. That's because nitrogen is essential in the formation of protein, and protein makes up much of the tissues of most living things. The second of the big three, phosphorus, is linked to a plant's ability to use and store energy, including the process of photosynthesis. It's also needed to help plants grow and develop normally. Potassium is the third key nutrient of commercial fertilizers. It helps strengthen plants' abilities to resist disease and plays an important role in increasing crop yields and overall quality. Potassium also protects the plant when the weather is cold or dry, strengthening its root system and preventing wilt. The big three provide the foundational nutrients of today's commercial fertilizers. Standing in the fertilizer aisle of a garden or farm store, you are faced with a dizzying array of fertilizer options, many with a series of three numbers like 10-10-10, 20-20-20, 10-8-10, or many other combinations of numbers. You may be asking yourself, what do these numbers on fertilizer mean? These are the NPK values, or nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Nitrogen is used by the plant to produce leafy growth and formation of stems and branches. Plants most in need of nitrogen include grasses and leafy vegetables such as cabbage and spinach. Basically, the more leaf a plant produces, the higher its nitrogen requirement. Although 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, most plants cannot utilize this. Plants in the bean family, legumes, have nodules on their roots where bacteria live that fix nitrogen from the air for the use by the plant. These provide their own nitrogen fertilizer this way. You can tell if your plants need nitrogen when their growth is stunted with weak stems and they have yellow or discolored leaves. Nitrogen fertilizers are quickly washed out of the soil by rain and need to be renewed annually. With crops that require a lot of nitrogen over a period of time like cabbages and marigolds, adding nitrogen incrementally through the growth period is the most efficient application method. Phosphorus is essential for seed germination and root development. It is needed particularly by young plants forming their root systems and by fruit and seed crops. Root vegetables such as carrots, beets, and turnips need plentiful phosphorus to develop well. Without ample phosphorus, you will see stunted growth, probably a purple tinge to leaves and low fruit yields. Phosphates remain in the soil for two or three years after application, so the amount in general fertilizer is probably enough. Add just before planting or top dress during growth periods. Potassium has the chemical symbol K from its Latin name, Kalium. It promotes flower and fruit production and is vital for maintaining growth and helping plants resist disease. It's used in the process of building starches and sugars, so it is needed in vegetables and fruits. Carrots, parsnips, potatoes, tomatoes, and apples all need plenty of potassium to crop well. Plants that are short of potassium will have low resistance to disease, scorching of leaves, and poor fruit yield. Tomatoes will really show the effects of shortage potassium. Potassium usually lasts for two or three years in the soil, but for vegetable production, additional will be required.